So the stories and experiences I'm gonna be telling you guys, I'm gonna be sharing to you guys are the story that happened while I was in India. In the middle guy showing us the middle finger. Like this! Next story is happened while I was in in Fal. <laughs> he was trying to speak with me in Manipuri for a while. This happened to me like I I couldn't forget about this situation. So Hi guys! Sodiha! Welcome and welcome back to Main of Hit. Yeah, so um I hope you guys are all doing well. So recently I was watching um Northeast Man YouTubers videos about resisting, like uh Lensing Quickly, uh Bernica and Luna Yukini channels. Well yeah, that reminded me of my own stories, my own experiences that I had been bullied and racist and also sexual harassment too while I was in India. So the stories and experiences I'm gonna be telling you guys, I'm gonna be sharing to you guys are the story that happened while I was in India. Alright, so so I just want to let you guys know that actually I was raised here in Thailand. I was born here in Thailand and I graduated a bachelor degree in Chandigarh, Viswaparthi University in West Bengal, nearby Kolkata. Yes, most of people are Bengali people, um, like. Mm. <laughs> Like, it's, this is not really gonna be a funny story, but it's just reminding me of some greeting Bengali words like Gamona Sho Palochi, something like that. Anyway, yeah, come back to the point is that um, I studied there with my Thai friends, I didn't go there alone. So that's why we, we, we mostly communicate with each other in Thai language, and that I think that was really bad for whoever would like to learn English, would like to improve English but still like forgetting about practicing. Yeah, the story starts from here. When I was there with my friends, all of us didn't really know much English, like proper English. And the problem of Thai people is R and L. R and L pronunciation. Yeah, it's like, uh, what are you doing? But Thai people might say like, what are you doing? When I speak like, okay, can you bring, can you bring me the Bloom. Bloom is like flower, flower blooming, right? I would like them to bring me a broom. The broom. Yeah. But there they would like bloom. Bloom really? Bloom or broom? You know, they would like sometimes make fun of it. If I met good people, they would just say, you know, it's not a broom. They will fix, they will cart me. And the other side, if we met like a very naughty people or, you know, like, Kiddish people, they would just laugh at us like that and yeah, just make fun of it. Alright, um, uh, the second thing is that we Thai people basically speak from nose only like, Where are you going? Bye night, um, I love you from here. In fact, we don't really know that we, <laughs> we speak like from nasal. When we spoke with friends, friends, yes, friends, for example, it's like, when we talk about something like where were we going or yeah that place was so nice and if I answer like yeah that place was so nice if I if I spoke with my nasal nose like this then they would make fun of it like you know the whole conversation the whole accent would completely change like oh really they would just they would just make fun of like. They, they, they would just mock it, yeah. Why are you speaking from nose? Why are you speaking from nose like this? From like normal talking, like from normal voice, like this, completely changed to another nozzle. It's like, they're mocking at us. Yeah, I think that that was the second thing that I remember. All right guys, coming to the third thing that I, that we had, that I, I had experience with. This happened while I was while we were going here and there, here and there around the campus. We would always hear, you know, Indian people, a group of them, you know, shout shouting like shong xing shong xing shong xing like xing shong xing shong xing shong like that to us, but they just didn't show up like who they are, they didn't show their faces, but they just they, they just made a loud noise like, with chong cheng chong cheng like that. At that time, like 
bully things like you know racist didn't really you know come out with like very worldwide like that so we didn't really know that they were um racist we thought we but we knew that they were mocking at us and we didn't know that that was a problem so we just yeah kept going and just ignoring them all right guys so i think the next thing next story is kind of shocked me a lot when it happened so that time uh, the transportation wasn't that um, convenient the only thing that we could do is that we we were cycling to the department coming back to the house and going to the market we had only a bicycle and a rickshaw not even auto rickshaw i my friend and my sister Anne, we were sitting in one rickshaw together we were going to i think somewhere we were going this direction, right? So another rickshaw with Indian guys, three Indian guys sitting in one rickshaw. We were talking like maybe gossiping or talking about something, something, right? Then as soon as that rickshaw came, I heard voice first, the loud noise came first with like chong cheng, chong cheng, something chong cheng, I don't know. Yeah, after that, before, that rickshaw with three Indian guys passing it, they did not they, only one guy I remember. And the middle guy did like this, showing us the middle finger. Like this to us. And I was like, oh my god. And yeah, of course I was shocked. I was shocked definitely. Like, what the hell were like what the hell was he doing man like to us why what why did it do that to us but like unfortunately we didn't do anything and the question was like why and then i told my friends and we kind of like talking about that just a little bit and then we forgot about that but that situation captured me like i still remember that well but i couldn't remember the face of that guy of course, but I remember that suggestion well, but it's like, they really did disrespect us. Why did it do that to us? Why? Right? Yeah. But like we didn't do anything. Yeah. And then, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so the next story is kind of, I think I feel like it became like very common things that happened while I and my girl friends were in India. There was like a narrow street and with like crowded people out there. And there was like a s inches, inches of space that left to be walked past, but they still walked past and they passed us, touched, touched our body. This part, the breast, the bun, everywhere. They could just walk past this in that small space just to hit us i think the first time the first time they hit my breast i don't know which part of their body but they hit my like this pass and press a little bit here quite hard and just walk away just like that I, and i was thinking that it might it, it, it was just an accident i was feeling a little bit like insecure yes but like oh my god yeah he touched my breast already he touched my boobs already and he just walk away i feel like it's not safe like i don't know you know a girl of course you feel a little bit like i don't know it's it's really like very bad for me but later on i knew how to like you know um what do you say get rid of this this type of situation i mean just like oh move a little bit or trying to like um, cover my brace, cover it, or even like the backs. The backs could really help us to like cover, or like, you know, just be away a little, a little away from um, them. Yeah, that really helps. So be careful. Yeah, if you are a foreigner watching this video and you, uh, you are willing to visit India, I think this really could help you. Just you know, to be safe. A woman should be safe. Yeah, to feel safe. Hmm. This is coming to um, the airplane. This happened to me while I was flying to Infal. Yes. 
and yeah, most of the time I went to and fall, I went alone. And um, I was sitting beside one Indian guy, I don't know who, and I didn't know where he's from. So um, I, I was at that time, at that day, I was, and, and you know the flight, most of, most of the flight is like flying around midnight or very late night. So I was kind of really tired, of course. Well, it took uh, only three hours to reach Kolkata first, yes. I was about to only take a nap and you know, I would sleep like for two hours and then after that I would woke up and after that I will, sorry, after I will wake up and then, um, you know, I remember the time an Indian guy beside me, he acting kind of weird um, with his phone, you know. He was pulling down the table, the back side of the seat table down and then he was using his phone like nothing happened just like natural acting maybe yeah he was using his phone and then as soon as i opened my eyes i saw my face in his screen phone he was like what the fuck is doing i was like turning the first the first thing i could do was like turning the other side and i was like what the fuck is doing i was i was talking to myself like, what the fuck it was doing and then i turned back and see he just switched i mean yeah he turned off the screen to be like black i was like what the i was of course i was really afraid to like what he's gonna do with my face what is gonna why he why he was recording my face why is that then i was like he when he stopped at the first time i was like okay i was like okay maybe nothing happened or maybe he just trying to um you know use the video mode and to like to like recording everywhere <laughs> uh, in the airplane like oh um i'm here in the airplane like, like, right now or something like that maybe his maybe his purpose was just to recording his, himself i was thinking like that and then again of course i i closed my eyes again and <laughs> and then i, I and then i after as soon as i op uh, opened my eyes i saw my face again in his you know Screen. I was like, what the? I turned my face again to the other side. This time, I, um, I, what do we say? I gathering up all my courage and I got up. I stood up and I went to the other seat and sit. And yeah, I was sitting under the other seat, like maybe, um, like three lines before his seat and then i was sitting there for a while and then you know what happened that was like there was like one cabin crew came to me and then she said like oh ma'am you couldn't man you cannot sit here because this is like business seat or a vip seat something like that i didn't know and i was like i'm sorry like i i told her that there was a guy sitting beside my seat trying to record me on his phone. I told her like that. She said like, but you cannot sit here, ma'am. Still, you got to sit somewhere else, maybe. Um, then I was like, I was, I was angry on her, you know, that time. But then she um, took me to another seat, which like not at the same seat beside that freaking guy. Yeah, another with like, I think there was no one sitting beside me uh in another seat i was like okay i'm moving to another to another seat and i was sitting there until the until i reached the kokata time yeah yeah so that's about story that's what my like um um what do you say six experience that i had faced all this like weird weird experience anyway yeah the next story is happened while i was in in foul <laughs> this happened to me like i i couldn't forget about this situation so i was there alone again i was going to the post office like nearby guys some part somewhere there i didn't, couldn't remember the exact name of the place or the 
street. I didn't go by blocking or recording myself. I was wearing long sleeve and long pants with a gap on as well. And also sunglass. So you may not figure out who I am if you don't know me. So I was wearing that like that, very everything covered all over my body. Yeah, while I was walking there, that was like one street, like lots of buses and quite not that crowded people, not really much traffic, not really much vehicles as well pass by. So I was walking there and I was really scared, but I got to go because I want to know like how it was like, you know. I was crossing one street, couldn't remember, but not really that far, not too far from Gai Sampat area. And then there was one guy following me. Yes, I was like, while I was crossing the road, one guy was like, he was trying to speak something in Manipuri. Some, in the sense like, flirting with me like something nupi nupi and spishy spishy and nupi and i don't know I, I i only understand nupi and then he was throwing all the words to me and then i was like mm, why are you following me don't follow me i don't really know manipuri and i don't want to talk to you i was thinking to myself like that but my face expression was like mm, nothing happened like I was looking at him once when he hey something like that and I was looking at him once and then I turning back and after that I just ignore him and I kept walking I kept ignoring and kept walking to the post office without looking back without turning back and look at him, looking at him at all maybe that's why he like slowly went away and after that that was like nothing happened thank god that was nothing happened you know well, but actually, I was, I want to say that I was really, 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 really scared, man. Like, I want to say that I, I was really afraid of you. I was really afraid of you. But I couldn't do anything. You know, actually, it, it may sound funny or it may sound like small thing. It, it may sound like not really big deal for you guys for every man or maybe some of you some of women that watching this video but i want to say that i was really really afraid i mean i was really afraid what's really scare experience like moment that i had been through you know yeah that after policemen looking at me but there was like, nothing happened and then i reached the police oh sorry and i reached the post office safely and while i was going back to the place i stayed um i um accidentally met a friend i don't know how could he remember he he, he is uh, felix he say hi to me and i was like oh hi oh my god oh my god i feel safe a little bit safer like oh my god i made a friend i made a friend in a very strange place in a very place that I I don't know the language. Well, yeah, I feel so safe. Like, oh my god! And then he just say hi, and then yeah, hello, and this and that, and greeting a little bit, and saying this and that, and a little bit, and then he um, rode a um, motorcycle away. Yeah. Ah, alright, guys. Um, anyway, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope this video could encourage women or uh, everyone who is suffering or who is gonna be in that situation because we really don't, don't know the future what's gonna happen to us right so i would like I, I i hope this video could encourage you guys to stand up for your right or if you are in that type of situation you should just get rid of it trying to get rid of that situation as soon as possible speak with somebody who could help you to speak out just don't keep quiet keep don't keep quiet to only for yourself so and to every man that watching this video please understand that woman is really fragile so please understand us and don't try to do like that to us because this type of gesture this type of behavior it's really ah uh, we we are afraid <laughs> we are real afraid it's not really funny it's not really it's not funny at all Okay, well, last thing I want to say that 
boyfriend sometimes they don't really help us that much you know i don't want to blame my my ex boyfriend i'm not telling which ex but i don't want to blame my ex because i understand that we were young we were young to understand things we didn't know much about the world so it could lead me to be like a very depressed person like depressed disorder it could lead me to that level you know but um um like luckily i passed it i could get rid of that situation because i was with um my family members well yeah that i could pass that i could get through that but i want to say that i told the story i told that experience that have experience to my boyfriend my sorry my ex-boyfriend and he was really interesting to know like how was it uh, he was really eager to know that type of situation instead of asking me how, how, how are you oh my god are you all right instead of asking my feeling instead of carrying my feeling but he asking me like kind of like really interesting really interesting for him like how do you feel oh my god um uh, you must feeling like nervous right uh, this and that, and that in fact it's like i was like disappointed like you, you're not supposed to ask me like that you're supposed to ask me like how did i feel right it was very inappropriate like yeah so let's say that um um yeah don't tell i mean it's okay to tell your boyfriend but sometimes boyfriend doesn't really help yeah that's all i want to say maybe love relationship is like doesn't really last long so your family is much bit much much better to share to tell all these stories anyway yeah guys thank you so much for watching this video I hope you guys enjoy this video and I hope you guys get some lesson or help you guys somehow at least encourage you guys or something like that. Yeah. I hope you guys stay well, stay blessed and yeah. Love you. I love every human being and especially a woman. I love you. Bye. Mm -hmm.